Hi there, it's Russ and Paul from Studio One Expert and we are here with a video showing you everything you need to know about Studio One 4.6. The good news is that a lot of this is going to be done by Paul because the hot kind of ticket item is a completely revamped version of Empire and Paul has had access to this for a number of months now and has been talking to them about it and he will give you uh, some demos of it and tell you what it does and other stuff but I think what we'll do first and Paul and I have agreed as that's kind of the headline we will go first if that's okay probably isn't within any of you to the other stuff that's available as well that's coming in because this is everything you need to know kind of so I think it would be remiss of us wouldn't it Paul if we didn't show them everything that they need to know yeah absolutely so the 10 headline features of course umpire is the big one it's it's umpire and pedal board and we'll talk about that later and Paul will give you some some screaming stuff so the next big thing is that Paul uh they've updated the the browser now haven't they so if you go to the right hand side of here the browser now in, yeah in your browser window where mm -hmm. you look at your plugins and all that stuff uh we've got some new things like shop if we go to the shop uh, tab at the top now yeah and click on that then you'll see that that will start getting populated where you can buy stuff from within studio one and there's a better view now what they call the tree view so you can either go to tree view which is kind of the kind of the old-fashioned way of looking or this iconic view so paul's just going to show it, list view as they say or tree view and then you can demo stuff before you buy it from within studio one which is really nice that's quite nice as well and there's this new exchange option built in now which is uh they had an exchange thing before didn't they where you could you could swap like uh, drum layouts and stuff like that yeah uh but exchange and soundcloud and those have all been updated now and that means that you can browse, download, review and preview shared Studio One content with other people, which is quite useful. So if you're collaborating with people, I think that's a really nice feature. So what they're saying is it'll get you faster navigation as well. Uh, and it, having played with that, I think I think I agree with them as well. Now, in arranging and editing, there's improved copy and paste uh, behavior in the arranger sections. So you can now reliably, as they put it in their words, not mine, you can now move stuff around copy and paste around the arranger sections uh, reliably and it will maintain things such as tempo and time signature which is nice and very good yeah there's an, another good feature in fact the the patterns have been bolstered as well so i, I loved when patterns came along anyway because i'm an old c lab user from 30 years ago so when uh, patterns came along that was cool but now you can convert a part to a pattern as well now and you could take a part and make it into a pattern and work in pattern mode uh, another nice thing they've added as well is they now offer long tide notes in patterns so it's not all kind of like rhythmic you can actually have nice long long notes as well for, for like bass lines and sequence lines and stuff like that uh, you can also do delay per step now in patterns and another new feature which I love about patterns is they've now added improved uh, you can record within patterns as well so you can do real time recording so you can kind of jump between doing very quick step, putting the kicks in, and then you might want to play the hi-hats in live. Do you know what I mean? But it's still within a pattern. So it's the best of both worlds, really. Yeah, it's brilliant. So it's, it's really good. I like that. Yeah, really uh, good. And you could, you could do independent saving and loading of pattern presets as well now, uh, which is nice. So in the pattern mode. And they've also improved tempo and time stretching as well. Then if you ever know, you found this, I found it sometimes. You'd sometimes drag stuff in and it wouldn't time stretch properly. They say that's been improved in 4.6. So, yeah, yeah. I think sometimes you had to, uh, yeah, even though you knew that there was tempo information in, inside the file, yeah, it didn't it didn't time stretch properly, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'd have to go in and turn the, <clears throat> turn the checkbox on and off a couple of times to say, uh, bring in loops at, at, at the, the song tempo. And sometimes it would then uh, fix that. One thing to note at this point before we get into the kind of the main meat of this feast, which is you showing us how wonderful this guitar uh, stuff is, Paul, Yeah, uh, is Studio One 4.6 is the last Studio One update to support Windows 7 and Windows 8. So you heard that here. If you're on 7 or 8 of Windows, this will be the last version of Studio One you'll be able to use with 7 and 8 of Windows. So that's one thing to, 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 to bear in mind. So... Uh, 
I think that's pretty fair. Where are they on Windows now? Windows 10? Oh, I couldn't even tell you, but yeah, something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Way, way past, way past uh, 7 and 8, yeah. Yeah, so kind of just to summarise what I've just talked, what we've just talked about before we go to the, the mega uh, feast of the deal with that, is that 10 new great features, Empire 3, featuring state-based space modelling <laughs> and the new FX suite, the new pedal board in there, updated browser, support for tide notes in the melodic patterns, uh, convert instrument parts to pattern options, improved tempo matching for loops, uh, extended ID tagging for compressed audio formats. We didn't mention that, but that's included. There's a new podcast song template and macro page for those doing voiceover work and podcast work. That's cool. I think that's probably been heavily influenced by the really big, great Facebook group for for uh, dialogue and narration in Studio One. So it's good to see that. And there's real-time time stretching support for presence xt editor as well now that's been added in 4.6 but paul we've been patiently looking at this screen <laughs> tell us all about this you we we paul, for those that don't know paul has a long history as a session guitar player with top name acts and is also a producer so i can't think of anybody better to have a advised these guys on this and also to be uh, showing us it today so paul what what we got with umpire now then oh tar right yeah so it's completely, completely updated from from the last version. I mean, I don't know if uh, I don't know if you if you felt this as well, Russ, but I didn't like the last Empire at all. So I always, if I, I mean, I don't really use a lot of um, amps in plugins at all. But if I did, I would not have loaded that up. But with this version, it's completely different, and to be honest, it sounds great. So I think what they've done with it, the way that they've modelled all of the amplifiers is well if you put like a pedal before the amplifier it reacts as the amplifier would react to that pedal so if for instance you had a um, a Marshall style amplifier and you put a certain pedal before it and then you uh, then you switched over to the Fender style amplifier the uh, the two amplifiers would react differently because one's like a um a what do they call it a high um high headroom amp and one's a low headroom amp so that is brilliant. They've also got this little bar here, which shows what is before the amplifier and what's after, so pre and post. And that is all movable here. So you see this little blue line? Yeah. That's basically this line here. So you can move that about. And I can have, say, like one of these pedals I can put in, so like a tube driver. Now that's going into the... So I've got the input, the amplifier here. Yep. And here is the here is after the amplifier. So, I mean, the way it sounds to me is it's actually after the speaker um, as opposed to in the effects loop so so for instance if i if, if i switch on which makes sense to be honest isn't it i can't think of a guitarist on the planet that takes the the, the speaker output of an amp and then puts it through some effect and then into the get, get into the speaker do they well i mean i guess sometimes i mean i have i have um effects loops in my amplifiers and, and if you want a certain sound yes i would record i would record it that way but most of the time i like oh right so this means the effect this is kind of the effects loop section is that what it means well well no i think what what they've done here is i think because i mean basically this um if, if you put the reverb in there it's a to me it sounds like a stereo reverb so it's a mono it's a mono amplifier it's a mono speaker but there's still a stereo effect coming out. So it sounds to me like the, the effect is actually after the speaker. Right. Yeah. So, um, so for instance, here's a tube screen. So let's play the Marshall. Now, if I put in the, the tube driver, let's turn yep. it up. Now, the way that this, uh, the way that that reacts to this amplifier, as opposed to let's put in, say, like the, the box. Put the box. Yeah, okay, let's put the box in. Well, you'd hear more of a more of a difference actually if I can just put in the uh, the black face because that's a very high like high head amp. Yeah, yeah. Ex okay, exactly. Yeah. Now let's uh, let's take off the trim. There, I'll show that later on, but. Now, with the Marshall, this part of the tube driver, because you're driving into the front of the amp, it really overdrives the front of the amp because you're distorting the input. But with this, because it's a much higher headroom, it's, it acts like a, a volume boost and a sort of a mid boost. Right. So and it's because you've 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 owned you've either owned or do own most of this gear. Yeah. 
Yeah. Is that how it would happen in the real world? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so, so yeah, so if you put a, a boost pedal, um, so like a clean boost pedal in front of a Fender Twin, it just, it sounds like you're bo- uh, boosting the volume. Of the amplifier, while, while if you put a boost pedal into into say the front of a, a Mesa Boogie here, yeah, it just it, it just distorts it more. So let's have a look. So for instance, here's the Boogie. Now if I turn this on, yeah. So that really works. Um, what else have we got? We've got a bunch of different cabinets. They've obviously improved the graphics 100%. Uh, we've got all of these different cabinets. And now right at the end, you've got this user cabinet, which gives you the option of loading your own impulse responses. So, oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. How so, cool is that? Yeah, it's brilliant. So that's really great. That's really good. Uh, some of... Let me, let me see. Let me just load up the, 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 the twin again. And let's turn that off and let's turn let's turn the reverb off as it has the reverb built into the twin now it's got a really nice sounding spring reverb yep but is uh, that currently going in just so i'm trying to understand the graphics here, is that currently going into a into a marshall cabinet yes now okay. for some reason it doesn't change and i quite like that to be honest i quite okay. like the fact it doesn't change but if we want to load up say like the that's the, the twin cabinet. I imagine that's a twin cabinet, yeah, as it's yeah. two budget. But it's a. Uh, but it's. Um, but one of the things I really loved about this amp is the the trem system on it. You can't have enough trem, can you? Let's be clear. Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So. That sounds really great. Now, what else we got? We've got uh, the VC30, which is like a box. Yeah. Now, one of the things, actually, let me put the reverb on. Always. Can I ask you? Sorry, yeah. just, yeah. just, I'm, I'm, I'm playing like the person watching the video. Yeah. Can you get the jack on that combo and move it into another socket? Yes, exactly. So, 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 uh, so the um, Vox AC30 has six inputs. You've got your high inputs and your low inputs. Yep. And you can switch into your Vib Trem channel here. Got um, you. So I can let's turn that up a bit, uh, and you've got your different speeds. So slow, fast. Yep. Okay, nice. and trim and speed. Yep. So uh, let's put it on the on the speed. Now, also, what you can do is you can jumper the inputs as well. I so saw that you, then. How do you do that then? If, if if you hover, if you hover above the inputs, yeah, you get that. You just click there, and then it jumpers the inputs. And you can do that on a real box. Yes, you can do that on a real box. Yeah. Now, I can see on the other end of the amp, the head yeah. as well, there's things like, is that va- valve changes and, and stuff and, and, and impedance changes? Is, is that real or is that just, just graphics? I think that's just graphics. Um, okay. I've looked at this, I've clicked on things and nothing seems to move. I think that's that's voltages. Okay, got it. And you. it's like the fuse point as well. But, uh, so yeah. so if, if it doesn't work, check the fuse. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You got uh, you got a bunch of different microphones you can you can blend in. So you've got your Royer ribbon yep, type. Yeah, yeah. You've got your large diaphragm condenser. Yep. You've also got like a match pair. You can okay. switch in and out, and all all phase matched, etc. So you can do all that. Are they offering a fifty-seven as well? Uh, do you know what? That's a good point. Do you know I didn't even. I didn't even notice that. That is a really good point. There's nothing to say. You can't seem to change the mics. No, you can't seem to change the mics. But that is interesting. You wonder. Personally, if it was me, yes, I'd have a. Um, I'd or have perhaps a... mics are coming in the future. Perhaps that's the next part of it. So it looks like we've got a stereo pair X Ying. Yeah. We've got a, we've got a eighty-seven and a, and a, and a, a condenser, but no dynamic. Hmm. Yeah. It, does that differ depending on the cab you're on? No, it always it's always the same. So let's uh, let's switch over to so that one there. No, it's always the same. There's a dynamic there now. Yeah, we've got hold a dynamic on. now. We've got fifty seven now. Oh, hold on a second. Let me go back. Yeah. Where was got, the? There's a fifty seven. Oh, well, look yeah, at that. Fifty seven and a Royer. There we go. It's worth experimenting. Isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. So they've chosen mics depending on the cab you've got. Interesting. Okay. 
So if you just tab down instead of clicking on the graphics in that drop down menu at the right hand side at the top next to them there. Yeah. There we go. So that's there. Boom, boom. There we go. Right, there they we are, go. They are changing, aren't they? Oh, I apologise. Look at that. So sometimes you don't have a stereo pair either. You've got three instead, haven't you? If you go up again, a couple of more. Have a look. Oops. I saw it in a minute. It flashed by. There. Oh, Back I see. One. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so there we've got uh, a large diaphragm, 57 type, and a Royer. Now, and you've got delays on there as well. That's nice. And you can blend them. Yeah, and phase as well. Oh, great. Okay. So but it's not, it's not, it's not movable phase. It's just flips. Yeah, it just 180s. flips. Exactly. Yeah. Um, now, how use, how useful is that though in the real world? To, how often to, do we? Well, to be honest, I've only been using. I've been. Let me go through and find my favourite. Now, now, to me, this four by twelve sounds brilliant. So I've been using it for everything. Okay, cool. So, and and for me, I've just been using the uh, the fifty seven. And that would be loaded what with a, with 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 Celestians or something in the real world. Yeah, probably like greenbacks or something. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. And and to me, it does. It sounds the smoothest um, with all the with all the amplifiers. And talking of greenbacks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's probably worth mentioning at this point that all of w what we're talking about today is a free update to, s to version four owners. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So there's no greenbacks involved in the, <laughs> in the paper sense of the word. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Great. Now, okay. uh, one of the other things. Sorry, I got you distracted by the microphones. No, but we no, now no, no. Know that the microphones are are variable. Oh, I wonder how you actually. I mean, say I wanted a a large diaphragm. On, on it this. looks like it's set per per per, per it per, does uh, doesn't it per speaker yeah it does it does interesting yeah okay that's cool great Go okay ahead. there's a tuner uh, yeah there's a really good tuner it's a good tuner yeah it's a really good tuner that reminds me of the old Korg rack tuner do you remember the Korg 19 inch yeah. rack tuner that guitarist used to have? Add, add one of them yeah yeah and then uh, uh, it's got strobe and both yeah. it's got both options switch on the strobe and also down here you can if you can open this up go expand it uh your tuner appears. oh that's cool great yeah because that used to be in the original version as well didn't it which is yeah. nice so that, that's good to know that's yeah great. it's nice that's really and you nice. got and you you got collaboration as well for people who think that 440 was invented as a conspiracy <laughs> Yes, you can change it to uh, wherever, wherever you want. For if you, for conspiracy theorists, you don't have to stick at four forty. Have you ever tried? Have you ever tried doing a song at? Well, someone someone said that four three eight. It, yeah, that yeah, it's supposed to sound better. Have you have you ever? Yeah, I've heard it linked to Nazi war criminals and all sorts oh. of stuff it's, <laughs> and, and everything else and aliens. But but anyway, but if you if you're bothered by that stuff, you can. Let's let's can we hear some of the stomps, mate? Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, let me take it off the tuner mode so I can see what I'm doing here. So um, the tube driver. Now this was something that was actually in the last. Give me your version. top three. Okay, so my favourite is probably um, I have and I have different favourites for different amps. Yeah, so that's the rat. Uh, the, you know, the rat clone. So as with the rat, the, the filter works back to front. So uh, the more you filter up. The more uh, or, or the less the less highs you get. Great. Um, Am I right? Is there about two different versions of a rat? I think there's a few different versions. Not of the rat. There's there's literally twenty different versions of a big of a muff of a, a fuzz pedal of, of the the big muff. There's like oh, right, Russian okay. big muff and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so, but uh, we don't know which ones they've modelled, do we? No, no, I don't know. Um, now for the dual amplifier, what's what really works well there is well, well one of the tricks to do with with the ah, tube screamer. Yeah, no, one of the tricks to do with the with with a Mesa Boogie rectifier style um, amplifier yep. is 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 to put a tube screamer before it because the Mesa Boogie has a bit of a bass hump down the bottom end, and just to control that, especially live, people put um, tube screams in front of it. So without and then with. And, and it just removes that sub bass thump that you get. So. All right, cool. Yeah, so that's really good. Um, now, what else have we got? Okay, so we've got chorus modulation, pan, reverb, tremolo, which you know is handy if you got if if you have um, if you're not using the the Fender amps. You've got uh, like an auto wah thing there. 
and at the top you've got the, the big muff the delay an equalizer and the fat pedal a phaser as well as i uh, probably didn't mention the phaser the modulation now this is like the boss chorus the old original yeah. the old original one and a panner and obviously reverb and the reverb is what a digital reverb yeah yeah it's a digital reverb i mean let's uh yeah. let, me, let me take that out of here it's <laughs> Uh, now it's yeah it sort of sounds it sort of sounds roomy to me more of a room than a yeah yeah, yeah it would have been nice to have it would have been nice to have a like a spring type maybe in different choices but I guess you know all of these things could be coming in the next releases we don't know do we yeah obviously they're going to grow the pedal collection I'm guessing aren't yeah they? yeah and, and the amplifier as well I mean at the moment they've got you've basically got everything you need so you've got like an 80s sort of rock amp you've got a 90s heavy gain amp high gain amp you've got like you know your 60s and you know, you've got the, a country amp you've got in the in the yeah, twin yeah it's literally everything you need and last of all uh for bass players you've got you've got an svt style amp oh that's cool that's yeah. great now uh one question T talk going back to the cabs and you say you can use your own cab models yeah uh what's the what, is that is that a standard system do you is it is, is a, a camp uh uh, a, a, a cab. Uh, but yeah, you uh, can. Um, do, uh, do you mean like um, the the IRs are the IRs? The, so the, the the impulse responses was exactly the the, the two words I was searching oh. for, but <laughs> couldn't find in my empty head. So you could choose. So you just do that, and you, you so. Was, 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 yeah, some people create their own IRs, so you can load them in there. Um, and when you click on mics, then can you load the mics, or is it? Did you choose a mic there? No, that? I think that's uh, that's the microphone. That's the microphone IR. So if I had any IRs okay. in here, I could load. Okay, I could load them right. In. Okay, and then how do you load an IR into the cab? You just hit the cab, do you? No, no, no. You, you just click here. You choose your IR. Oh, got you, got you. And then you got can, you. and then you can blend again, uh, like you can in, in your microphones. Oh, good. So you could have any mic. Well, yes, yes. If if Within you reason. yeah, if you create an IR. So so for instance, if I've I've got like a divided by thirteen cab, and I could I could create an impulse response from that cab with, with different microphones and then I could load them in and it would sound like it was going through that you know that cabinet that's very very cool yeah so okay give us some of your highlights of the of, of, of this uh, this this uh, a vampire then well it's changed it has changed because since the first uh, the first version it has very much changed so every every time they do a beta update sort of the sound has changed a bit now my favorite because probably... you went back and gave them feedback, didn't you, and said, "Listen, this 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 would sound more like a messer if this was changed and stuff like that." So... Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have got other guys doing that as well. So yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. I don't mean you in particular. I don't mean it's just a Paul thing, but I'm just saying that, that, that there's been a team that have been feeding back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now tasting the dishes and saying whether they taste the same. <laughs> yeah. So so for me, the best uh, the best amplifiers are the clean ones. I yep. think, I think because, and, and to be honest, that's probably the hardest to do. I mean, yeah, it's a minute. Everybody can do dirt, can't they? Yeah. It's within reason. Yeah. I mean, there is, I, I don't really know one, one, um, you know, amplifier, um, plugin that can't do a decent, you know, a decent high gain sound, but yeah. it's, it, um, it is the, the, the clean sounds, which, which, which normally do get affected. Um, so yeah, I mean, I so think... give us a couple of uh, to get rid of those reverb pedals. Are they turned off anyway? Are they? Yeah, but, yeah. Let me get rid of that. Just yeah, give me... us, give us some of your, give us, a, give us a nice, uh, give us a, I don't know, I don't know, nice pop guitar or something first, then. <laughs> and that's going through the Marshall cab again. That's going through the Marshall, yeah. And how much should now? Could you adjust the mics a bit so we can just get a sense of how much they make a difference when you course. start? So that's that's just the dynamic. That's the yeah. dynamic. And then that's right. That's bringing some of the uh... the, the one two one in. Yeah. And this is the. Pair. A pair. Okay. And the delay is how far you take it back from take it from the cab, yeah. I'm I'm guessing so. I mean, let's let's try it on. Let, if I bring down that, and then we can bring up. Yeah. Th those let's let's blend match, those two. Blend yeah. those two, and then just move the delay. Okay. Yeah. So now it's sort of out of phase. Oh. 
Yeah, so you can sort of switch in, you know, flip the phase and all, and all that as well. Okay, Brilliant. cool, cool. That's good. Okay, yeah, yeah. So my favourites would be the would be the Blackface Twin and the VC30. So the Fender style and the AC30. Okay, because they they're just great clean sounds, are they? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, it, there's not much you can't do, you know, for for a for any sort of um, you know pop production, country production, rock production without those, you, you know, uh, with those amplifiers. It's you know they do everything really. But the you know you know the high gain one, the boogie one's really good. It's got a bit too much of a of a low thump. The low thump's a little bit different to my um, dual rectifier. But yeah. It's, so it sounds a bit different, although it sounds great. So, so it's different rather than bad. Yeah, absolutely. It's just okay. different. Yeah, it's just different. And and just at the top, that kind of uh, hamburger in the, in the center of the screen. Does that mean you can you can turn stuff on and off to make to make the, the GUI smaller and bigger? Exactly. Yeah. So you, you, you can uh, flatten it right. All oh, right. Just go down to your mics. And exactly. Then just go... Exactly. So you can just flatten off however much you want. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And then and there's see there's like an input and an output to match as well uh, on the way in and on the way out. Of, of actually, that's the actual real signal, isn't it, rather than the gain of the amp. Exactly. Yeah. So if you want to drive the amp a little bit harder, you could you, you can effectively just uh, you know just crank that up. So, Paul, uh, we, we obviously people probably prefer our opinion. We're just coming to thirty minutes, which is about enough time to, mm -hmm. to have a video like this. We've kind of talked around all the, the cool new stuff. Again, let's remind people all of this is free. Which yep. is amazing. I think they've done a great job. Absolutely. But but uh, out of ten, what would you give the new version of Empire at the moment? I'd give it. I'd give it an eight and a half. So you give it an eight and a half, which is a good score for a first outing. So what 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 do you would you like to see improved? Well, I'd like to see this. There's, there's some noises like if uh, sometimes when you're changing the amps, sometimes you get like a thump through. Um and does it clang when you kick it? <laughs> it should do. On. It should do. It should it? do. That would it be great, do. wouldn't it? If you bang the side of your. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I uh, yeah I've I've I literally um um I've got some new speakers as as you know Russ and uh, I got yeah, a bit what, worried yeah. when when that sort of blasted through at uh, hundred decibels whatever it was. So but apart from that I think that's in, I think the amps sound great and the way it feels feels really good as well. So. In does it feel like you're playing through an amp? Cause exactly, you play, yeah. Because you're a guitar player, you you know this better than most. You do. Feel, it does feel genuine. It does feel genuine, yeah. There's lots of amps in plugins that don't, and this yeah. one does definitely. It feels it feels like, especially when you're plugged into. Um, um, I'm using the Quantum for this. Uh, yeah. So so plugged into the front of the Quantum, playing through it, and latency so great with the Quantum. It it just feels like I'm plugged into an amp. It sounds it sounds oh, really and feels that's great. Good. Yeah. But let's let's kind of summarize this. Uh, 10 new features in 4.6 it costs zero for those who own four already so it's another fantastic I, what i love about pre is they just keep adding value to a product don't they they don't say oh by the way if you give us 30 pound a month then we'll give you some new stuff they just uh, keep giving you stuff and um, absolutely uh, uh and so uh, as an update uh it's interesting because nobody i don't think few people would have expected this would they they think that one minute you think they're going dance wise and the next minute you're going sort of picture wise and what i love about them is they kind of mix it up so the guitar players have, have got something this time haven't they which they probably didn't feel they were getting for a bit yeah and and to, uh, to be honest i think the the guitar side of things were the bit that lacked with studio one you know everything yeah. else is i mean this it's a great you know that the whole the, the, you know the whole system's fantastic but yes the guitar thing was the was the weak the weak point in the chain cool so uh, we like it. It's a great, great update. Uh, thanks for your uh, demos, Paul. And uh, let us know what you think in the comments. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.